Hey, it's Mark. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be walking you through how I created this dashboard that uses the dynamic zone visibility feature to dynamically change the charts that are visible based on different selections made in the view. I'll walk through how the dashboard is constructed, the arrangement of containers and the various calculations. Okay, so here we are in the dashboard and you can see the way that it's set up is we have one worksheet on the left and this is static. This remains the same throughout all of the different scenarios. And on the right hand side, we have one container for each of the scenarios. So they're numbered one to five. You can see them on the left in the object hierarchy. So we have the container for the first scenario, and this has a number of charts inside it, which are these charts here. And then there's scenarios two, three, four, and five. And we'll get to those in a second. So this first scenario is looking at one particular subcategory. So I can go ahead and select a subcategory. It appears in the title at the top. We have some analysis that focus on that particular subcategory, such as profits over time and, and sales by segment and so on. So the second scenario is that we may want to compare multiple subcategories. So we select a few of these. We want a scenario and different charts that allow us to easily compare those different subcategories. And that is scenario number two. So let's just select that container. And I'm going to bring that into the dashboard. So I'll just drag it over. And you see it's floating at the moment. It's going to hold down the shift key. And that allows me to tile it in the middle of the dashboard. Okay, so now we can see that properly. These set of charts in this particular container for scenarios who allow us to compare different metrics uh, for these different subcategories for a few different charts. And these are just sample charts. I haven't put a huge amount of time into creating these. It's more just an example. So don't focus too much on the chart, just more about the technique and how it's built. Okay, so with these first two containers in place, we can start to put in the dynamics and visibility calculations. So I'll select the first container where we're focusing on one subcategory. And then we go up to the top and you see on the left hand side, we have the control visibility using value checkbox, which is new in version 2022.3. So it's like that. And then we have this drop down up here. And then in this drop down, you'll see all the calculations that meet the criteria for being a dynamic zone visibility calculation. So it's not going to be all of your calculations necessarily. And there's some criteria listed on the tablet help page for this feature, which describes the criteria that you need to meet to be able to use these calculations. And I'll also go into some of the details of that in a blog post that I've written, which I'll link to in the description below. But essentially the main thing to, to understand is that these calculations do need to be Boolean, they need to return either true or false, and they need to be consistent across the full data set. So they can't be dependent on the view in any way. So typically that means they'll be wrapped in a some kind of LOD, a fixed LOD. Okay, so I'm going to use this first calculation, number one, uh, one subcat focus. And you can see that, that container has now disappeared. You see it's actually still selected, but it has actually disappeared from the view. And that's because the current selection on the left-hand side is uh, selecting multiple subcategories, not one. So the calculation uh, one subcat photo is now returning false. And that means that that container is not going to be visible in the dashboard. So let's control the visibility of this second container now. So I'll just select that, click the control visibility checkbox, and then we'll just select the second calculation number two. Okay, now that still is visible because this selection is still in place. But if we go and select one subcategory now, you see it's going to switch over and we're looking at the first container and then I can select multiple subcategories and then we switch back to scenario number two. So I'll go ahead and add in the remaining three scenarios now, three, four, and five, and just add on those calculations. And then we'll start to step through exactly what's in those calculations and how they work. Okay, so that's number three in place. And if we go ahead and pick the scenario that is number three, so looking at either a category across region or a subcategory across region, when we do that, we see that scenario three appears. Okay, so scenario three is slightly different because it has two headers. That is because this scenario can be either looking at a subcategory across regions or it can be for a category across regions. So in order to show the correct header, we just need to determine what the selection is, whether it's one subcategory or whether it's all subcategories within a particular category. And to do that, there are two further calculations. So I'm going to apply a separate calculation to each of these headers. So that only one of them shows at a time. So we'll select the subcategory one. And that's going to be determined by 3A, one subcategory. And then the second one is going to be determined by 3B, which is one category across regions. Okay, so you can see this now hidden one of those titles. And we're just looking at a subcategory. If we go ahead and select furniture, it's going to switch over. And now we're looking at a category. If we select appliances, we're now back to subcategory again. Okay, and again, we'll look at these calculations in a moment. So that's scenario three. Let's go ahead and bring in number four. Again, just holding the shift key down to tile this in. And then I'll apply... Calculation number four for this visibility, which is one region focus. And if I select one particular region, and you can see with every subcategory selected for one particular region, the scenario four container is showing which charts are allowing us to compare the metrics across that particular region. Okay, let's bring in number five. And so number five is for where we selected every subcategory in the view across all regions, and it's at the order ID level. 
Okay, so I'll just apply the visibility calculation for this particular scenario, which is number five. And you see that's now disappeared. Okay, so let's just bring it back by selecting all regions. Okay, and you can see this, this one is also slightly different that we have two charts in the view here. And actually want to show one of these at a time. And that's also gonna be based on another dynamic zone visibility calculation. It's dependent on the number of marks selected. So if I've, if I've selected more than five marks, I want this chart to show. If I've selected five or fewer, then I want this chart to show. So to do that, I'll select the chart and have another calculation set up for that, which is orders less than or equal to five. And you see that's now disappeared. And for this second chart, the strip plot, we're gonna use orders more than five. Okay, so now if we go ahead and select just four marks here, you see the table shows. If we select a large number of marks, then we have this distribution chart, which is much easier to use when we have a large number of marks selected. Okay, so we now have all five containers in the view. You can see on the left there, they're all tiled within this one particular horizontal container. Um, but we're only ever going to see one of these containers visible at any one time because the calculations that control these are all mutually exclusive. So only one of them will ever be true at any particular time. Okay, and to help just as I was building this, I created a small chart which just shows which of the calculations is true at any particular time and which is false. Okay, so let's just quickly step through the scenarios. So I've just selected one subcategory and we can see we're seeing scenario one, that calculation is true and the remainder of them are false. Multiple subcategories, now scenario two is true. It's like one subcategory across regions and we're only looking at scenario three. Same as scenario three, but this time with a different header for the category. Scenario four now, just focusing on one region. Scenario four is true. And then finally selecting all regions and scenario five. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of the calculations, including the dynamic zone visibility calcs. Okay, so if you're not aware, you don't have to go back to the view to actually see the calculations. You can just access them from the dashboard. Just click on any of the views go up to the analysis menu, edit calculated field, and you'll see all your calculations that are accessible for that view. So I'm going to start off these ones at the bottom here, which is total categories, total regions, so on. Um, these all have a similar format, so I won't go through all of them, but we'll just look at the first one. This is just counting the number of unique values for that dimension in, in the data set. So how many total categories are there in the data set? And it's the same for regions and the other ones as well. And let's look at a couple of these ones at the top. So now we're looking at the number of items selected, whether that's orders, categories, regions, and so on. So, and the way these number of items selected calculations work is I've created a set for each of the dimensions. So one for region, one for orders, one for subcategories and so on. And then when I select a mark in the view, there's a number of set actions in place. So when I select a mark, those dimension values are added to those respective sets. So, so for example, if I select art here, it's going to add the central region into this set. And the calculation then determines whether that region is in the set and if it is, it counts it. And it only count the distinct values. So if I select multiple subcategories here, it's not gonna count central five, six times. It's only gonna count it once. We've got calculations for the total number of regions and other dimensions. And then we've got calculations for counting how many have been selected. And those calculations are then used in the scenario calculations. So let's start to look at a few of those. So the purpose of this scenario calculation is to return true if only one subcategory for one region is selected, otherwise it will return false. So this region subcat selected is based on a, another field, which is a concatenation of region and subcategory. And that's so it can, we can ensure that selecting bookcases here for the northern region is distinct from selecting bookcases in the central region. So this calculation is dependent on number of regions subcat selected, which you can see on the right hand side. So there's another tip you can actually explore one calculation within the editor for a different calculation just by looking over on the right hand side here. And if you want to go and open that up, we can do that. So again, I've made a set of this field, which is itself is a calculation. You can see on the right hand side, this is just a concatenation of region and subcategory. So it's saying how many of those are in the set and return the distinct count of those. So again, if I've selected binders here and binders here, that's going to be two different selections because it's going to be the concatenation of both the region, in this case, north and binders, and then central and binders. They're two distinct selections. So going back to our first scenario calculation, we want that value to be one for it to return true. Okay, let's look at the second scenario. So for scenario two, we want to ensure that more than one region subcategory is selected, but then also to ensure that that selection does not meet the criteria for any of the other three scenarios. So comparing across regions or looking at one region focus or all products selected. Okay, and let's look at scenario number three. So you remember number three had two headers. So let's just bring this up. If we look at comparing across regions, okay, we had either the subcategory as a header or if we focus on one category, we have the category header. So for scenario three, we just need one of these conditions to be true. So let's go ahead and look at these now. So look at 3A and 3A is saying it only wants to have one subcategory selected 
and the number of regions selected equals the total number of regions. So you've got the same subcategory selected across all regions essentially. And that's what this condition represents. So I've selected shares across all three regions. So that meets the criteria of this calculation. So that will now return true. And if we select the category across all regions, that will meet the criteria for 3B. So let's have a quick look at that. So 3B is slightly more complex. This one is looking, first of all, to ensure that uh, the number of categories selected is one. So in this case, we've got furniture that's selected here. And then we're also checking that the number of regions subcategories selected is the same as the number of regions subcategories for the particular category that's selected. So as well as the set actions that are in place on the dashboard, there's also a parameter action which is capturing the category that's clicked on when I use those tooltip selections. So in this case, because I've selected furniture, furniture is now in this parameter. So it's going to return the number of region subcategories for furniture, which in this case will be four over three regions, so 12. And if we'd selected office supplies, then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six times three, so 18. And this parameter action actually serves two purposes. So as well as being used in this calculation, it's also used in the header up here. So if we double click on this header, you can see the parameters used in the title as well to display the category that's been selected. So let's go ahead and focus on the next one, which is number four. And that scenario is focusing on one particular region. So I select the central region here, the container for scenario four shows. So let's just have a look at the calculation for scenario four. And it's a relatively simple one. So we're just making sure that the number of regions selected is one and the number of subcategories selected is equal to the total number of subcategories. And obviously this is a somewhat simplified scenario because you could have fewer subcategories in this particular region than another one. But this calculation meets the needs that I have here for this testing. So just be aware that you might need to adapt some of these calculations for your own scenarios. Okay, then the final one is we're looking at all regions. So let's go ahead and bring up the calculated field for that. And this one's pretty simple. It's just checking out the number of regions subcategories selected is equal to the total number of region subcategories. That's going to be the total number of marks in the view essentially. Okay, and then as I mentioned before, we have two chart options for this scenario five. 5A and B, so let's have a quick look at those. And 5A is just checking that the number of orders selected is less than or equal to five. And 5B is just checking that the number of orders selected is more than five. And you can see that all of the scenario calculations that we've been through are wrapped in a fixed LOD. And that's just to ensure that these calculations can be used as dynamic zone visibility calcs. Okay, so the other thing we can look at is the tooltip selections and how that works. So to do that, we need to look at the tooltip. So again, it's another tip here, if you're not aware, you don't have to go back to the worksheet to look at the tooltip. You can just select the worksheet when you're on the dashboard, go up to worksheet and tooltip. So the way this works is it uses the allow selection by category um, checkbox, which is on by default. So you'll always be able to use this unless you've switched it off, obviously. And what it allows you to do is select all values that have the same dimension value as the one that you select in the view. So you can see I've got four dimensions in the tooltip here, subcategory, category, region, and all regions. And this is a text calculation, which I'll show in a second. Um, so if I select any subcategory with a particular value, this will select all other marks in the view that have that same subcategory value. Okay, so if I hover over this bar for phones, uh, which is in technology, you're going to see it's going to show both of those values in the tooltip. And if I select phones, it will select every other mark in the view that has that same dimension value for subcategory. So all of the phones values. And that's how you get this um, ability to select all of the marks for the same subcategory across all different regions. And that's what this scenario is, um, looking at subcategory across region. Likewise, we go to technology, it selects all of the values within the technology category across all the regions. Okay, so there's one value at the top there, we have the same for, for region as well. But then there's also all regions. And this is just a calculation which returns the same value for every row. And you can't see that in the view because I've just hidden the header for that, but it just sits to the left of region. And I'll just show you the calculation. Okay, it's a simple text field, it's just all regions. So essentially that's going to return the same value for all rows. So when I select that in the tooltip, it's going to select everything essentially. And that's scenario five. Okay, so the final thing we'll just look at are a few of the actions. So if we go to dashboard and actions, you can see there's a number of actions in place, mostly uh, set actions. So as I mentioned earlier, these are used in the, nearly all the calculations to count how many of that particular dimension value area are currently selected. So there's one for category, order ID, region and subcategory, regions and subcategory. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at one of these. We'll look at the category one. So they're all driven off of the hierarchy sheet on the left. So this category set is created off the category dimension. So it'll be capturing that. Okay, and regional region will be capturing the region and so on. There's a few parameter actions as well to capture the category region and subcategory and they're used in some of the titles. And then finally there's the, the filter. So actually what I'm selecting is showing in the different scenarios with the exception of number five. So number five just shows everything. So there's no need to filter that view. Okay, so if you want to explore this workbook a bit more and have a look at some of the calculations, you can download this from my total public profile. 
I'll put a link in the description below the video. I'll also add in a couple of links to some blog posts which I've created around this feature as well. Okay, so if you do have any questions as you look through the workbook, just drop them in the comments below the video and I'll respond to those as soon as I get a chance to do that. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.